You have arrived, senorita. Thanks a lot. Por nada. Buena suerte, Miss Connors. Could, uh, could this be a taxi? Si, senorita. Is there anyone around to drive it? Uh, my name is Fernandez. Oh, oh, how do you do? I'm very happy to know you. Then you're the driver. Yes, I am the driver. Do you think you could take me to San Marcos? Mm. When? Now. Un momentito. ¡José! ¿Qué quieres? ¡Luego vengo por ti! ¿Por qué? ¡Ya estoy listo! ¡Voy a llevar a la señorita San Marcos! ¡Luego vengo! ¡Pero no tardes! ¡Pierde cuidado! Now I can take you. Fine. They look heavy. They do, don't they? Uh -huh. Americans in town? Americanos? No. Sometimes they come to fish, but not now. No Americans at all? No. Isn't there a Mr. Latimer here? Latimer? No. Are you sure? Mr. Michael Latimer? Oh, Miguel. Si, sí, Senor Miguel. Everybody knows Senor Miguel. That was his friend we saw back there. But what does he do? Is he working? Work? <laughs> Senor Miguel? No. He fish, he flies, he shoots. He drinks, he's smart, but he never works. He's too smart for that. He's a very good friend of mine. I can believe that. Just put him in the lobby, hmm? Si, sí, señorita. Señorita? Yes, I'd like a room, please. Para usted? Uh, for you? Yes. Seguro. Mire, por favor. Sin aquí. I'm told you have another American staying here. Oh, señor Latimer. He not stay here. He lives here. Is he in the hotel now? He's fishing. But it's time for him soon to come in. Por favor. Un momentito. I'm going to give you your key now, eh? Please. Yeah, yeah. Un momentito. Bueno, 
pues puede quedarte con el pescado. Dale ya, si no te gusta, doña Nacha. Dale pescado, ella te gusta el ojo. ¿Eh? Bueno, eh. Una cerveza fría, eh, Miguel. Una cerveza, pero bien fría. Now, I like it made this way. I like two-thirds brandy and one-third white creme de menthe. Have you any shaved ice? Un momentito. Oh, fine. And shake it up well, please. Sí, señorita. Mm -hmm. you want. Maybe I could help you. Oh, I've already told him. Yes, I know you did, but he didn't understand a word you said. Oh, well, I ordered a stinger. A stinger? Mm. Oh. Well, you're not at the store club, but we'll give it a whirl. Traiga una stinger, crema de mente y cognac para la señorita, por favor. Gracias, señor Miguel. Sí, sí. I had no idea you were a fellow American. You didn't, huh? Well, uh, fellow American, I'd say uh, home, New York, clothes, Fifth Avenue, perfume, Chanel, education, Barnard, taste in books, doubtful. And what the devil are you doing here? Waiting. For what? For friends. Oh, and you're wrong about Barnard. It was Kansas College. Oh, from the corn country. Mm -hmm. uh, mind if I sit down? No, please don't. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. How are your friends going to get here? We're on a yacht, I hope. I expected to find it here when I arrived. A fishing trip, huh? Mm, well, they fish. I don't know much about it. That's very interesting. By the way, what's wrong with my taste in books? What do you think of that one? I love it. There, you see? No, I don't see. I think he's a great writer. Really? Mm. Well, he didn't make it with that one, for once the critics were right. I don't care what the critics say. I like it. Anna, girl, I like your spirit. As a matter of fact, I was reading a piece about him in a magazine site. It's a crummy magazine. You shouldn't read it. I think he's romantic. You do? Mm. Why? All well, the things he's done. World famous with his first book. Mm -hmm. Traveling all over the world, getting into wars. Mm. Hunting big game in Africa. Mm -hmm. well, I think he's wonderful. Mm. And, then, and then disappearing like that when he had everything. You're so right. He is romantic. How do you suppose a man as famous as that manages to disappear? Maybe he's dead. You don't think so. Oh, yeah. Senor Miguel? Senor Miguel? Si. Excuse me, I have a message for Senor Latimer. Who? Senor Latimer. Uh, it's about the boat. Pedro, he wants to know you go fishing tomorrow. Yeah, sure. Tell him same time. And have him bring some fresh bait, will you? Sure. I'll tell you. Gotcha, Senor. See? What did he call you? What's your name? 
I suppose it appeals to your sense of humor, Mr. Latimer, to, to let me make a fool of myself. Oh, come off it. You knew who I was. How'd you like to go fishing in the morning? No, now, just a minute, Mr. Latimer. Just call me Mike. And how about a real drink? Look, look I was... Some look, tequila. Was, you like no, it. No, thank you. You're the... You're the... And come fishing in the morning. You'll like that, too. the bullet for? It's got my name on it, Katie. Mm. I was just sort of lucky. I'll tell you about it sometime. Mike? Hmm? Why did you give up writing? <laughs> uh, you're a quizzy sort of girl, aren't you? Am I? Yeah. For the last week, what do I think? What do I eat? Do I sleep nights? Where am I going and why? And what do I know about you? You live in New York, you're on vacation with a fishing party, and you hate fishing, period. I'm sorry. It's, it's just that I'm interested, that's all. Uh, sure, so am I. But uh, let's talk about you for a while, huh? Katie, just answer one question, will you? All uh, right. You married? No, Mike. I guess it is a pretty wonderful night at that. Señorita, señorita. Ya puede bajar, conseguimos la comunicación. I'm sorry, I don't understand you. Oh. The telephone. New York. New York. New York. Oh. Please. Yes, thank you. Please. This really New York? Hello, who's there? Hello? I asked to speak with Catherine Connors. This is Henry McCartney of Sight Magazine. Who is this speaking? This is Fernandez, the taxi driver. Uh, un momentito. New York. Hello. Uh, hello, this, this is Hank. Is this you, Katie? Yes, Hank, this is Katie. Did you find him? Yes, I found him. What? I say I found him. He's here. What's that? I said, why didn't you phone me? I couldn't phone you, Hank. The line hasn't been working. Oh, well, uh, how are things working out with Latimer? All right, I guess. Except that I haven't seen him for the last three days. He hasn't been out of his room. I didn't get that. I said, why hasn't he been out? Oh, I don't know why. And Hank... Hank, I've been thinking. I'm not sure I am the right person to do this story, Hank. I can't hear you. Hello, H Hank. Hello. What's 
just the way you work? Mm-hmm. Always, always work this way. <laughs> Shouldn't have tried it, Katie. When you've lost it, you've lost it. Lost what? Skip it, you wouldn't understand. No, I don't. It's just that when a guy like me can't write, they ought to shoot him. Why, I've lugged this thing around for five years. I'll never know. Mike, why? Why, 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 why? You know why that last book of mine is no good, Katie? Huh? Because it's a phony. It's a fake. <laughs> you want to know when I really began to write? When I, when I knew I could write? When I married Connie. With Connie, you knew the truth. You, you lived it. You, you felt it. Connie, 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 Connie. You remember the character Harrigan in that last book? I didn't like him. That was my fault. He was a great guy. His real name was Mallory. The three of us were in Africa in safari together. Connie didn't seem to like him either. He kept saying she wished we were alone. so stupid. I couldn't understand. I, I couldn't see what was happening. I thought I knew her better than any man knew any woman. Yet I didn't see it. She tried to tell me out there in the bush country a thousand miles from nowhere. She wanted us to quit and go home. I blew my top. That's how stupid The next night, I found them together. Mike, I'm so sorry. Mike, please don't tell me anymore. Yeah, yeah I, I was sorry, too. I was so sorry I fell apart and went to pieces. And then I came home, alone, with a book inside me I couldn't write. I was finished. Where is she now, Mike? I don't know, somewhere, maybe in Africa, where I left her. But wherever she is, she's with him. Mike, what made you tell me this? I didn't mean to, Katie. I didn't mean to unload it on you. But I haven't talked to a girl like you in a long time. I guess a guy gets kind of tired of talking to himself. You're a good girl, Katie. I trust you. You're a good girl. <laughs> Apúrate, no seas floja. Sí, señor. They got your work on it. Ah, señor Miguel, yo siempre trabajando. Usted ya me conoce. Veinte, veinticinco, treinta, treinta y uno. Muchas gracias, señorita. Where are you going? Home. Pretty sudden, isn't it? I just have to get back. What about your friends, the fishing party? I don't know what happened to them. I, I can't wait any longer. I just can't. Yeah, I can see you're in quite a hurry. I was going to leave a note for you. Thank you. How are you going? I'll get a plane to Mexico City out of Acapulco. I'm going there by car. By car? Uh, not in that old box of bolts outside. You know how far Acapulco is? Amigo. Ah, uh, señor Miguel. How many times have you started for Acapulco? Siete veces. Seven times. And how do you like Acapulco? I don't know. I haven't been there. I haven't been there. Well, uh, what happens, Fernandez? You, you better tell the lady. Uh, the road is very bad. But I feel I get there this time. Uh, maybe. My friend, no Acapulco. No Acapulco. I've got a plane. I'll fly you to Mexico City. No, Mike. You'll never get a better offer. Please, I can't let you do that. Yes, you can. I want you to let me do that. In fact, you can't do anything else. No, really. Now, relax. It's all settled. But first, we'll have a drink, or my friends will think you don't like them. Right, Fernandez? Yes, big fiesta, mucho vino, habanero, música. <laughs> Gracias. 
held up. I'm sitting on something. Well, you won't need this in Mexico City. Hey, hey, not next to the compass, Katie. Come back soon, Senorita Gatti, and we'll give you another good body. Oh, I don't think I could take it, Pedro. <laughs> Tequila for the altitude. Gracias, amigo. Muchas gracias. Oh, Fernandez, don't forget to send that wire to Mexico City for me, okay? I send it right away. Good. Adios, amigo. Exactly. And don't Goodbye. overwork yourself. Oh, no. <laughs> Where are we? Right on course, Mexico City, straight ahead. How about that address? You never write letters. Well, I'm still good for a ten-word telegram, but I gotta know where to send it. Little belt. <laughs> Thanks. Katie? Hmm? You gotta go down now, punch through this stuff. May be a little rough. Where are we? Should be over Mexico City. What was that? It wasn't Mexico City. What's wrong? I don't know. Maybe they moved it. You see anybody you know? I don't see anything in the jungle. What do we do now? Turn back? No can't do. Why not? Guess. Oh, no. Well, take it easy, Katie. I can land this kite on a tomato patch. That compass may be off, but the sun isn't. Somewhere ahead's the east coast. You keep your eyes open for a nice, smooth beach, and we'll have a swim before breakfast. it. It's got to be.
Mike. Mike. Catch Igmal Isaac Bay. He'll be all right, kicking shortly. You've both been very lucky. You'd better come along with me. Punchy, but okay, I guess. How about you? You I'm are fine. It's good. Oh, this is Mr. Brown. Oh, how do you I do, do, sir? The plane crashed. I looked up, and there he was. Well, thank you very much. We sure picked the right spot, yes, didn't we? Yes, we certainly did. Apart from this, there's nothing but jungle for miles around. Well, where exactly are we? Oh, you don't know? No, Please, I... Please, sit down, oh, won't you? Thank you. I, uh, I thought we were headed for the East Coast. Yes, well, you were going in the right direction. You've certainly been extremely lucky. We're delighted to have you with us. Mr. Thank Brown's you. read all your books. Yes, yes. we will find them all inside. I know a bit about Africa myself. Oh, you've hunted there? Mm -hmm. In Kenya. I used to know the country very well. Oh, so that's it. Hmm? I seem to feel we've met before. Wasn't it Nairobi? No. No? Well, it must have been England. I spent a lot of time there during the war. I don't think so. You might easily have forgotten me, Latimer, but I should never forget having met you. That's very strange. Do you understand that? Not a word. It means food's up, and I'm sure you're both ready for it. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Just give me time to get my clothes on. Yes, will you? I'll be with you in a minute. Should we go inside, Miss Collins? Sorry, Napoleon. Oh, come and sit down, Latimer. This is my colleague, Dr. Van Anders, Michael Latimer. How are you, Doctor? How do you do? Well, I guess I have you to thank for uh, patching me up, don't I? No, not me, Mr. Latimer. Uh, Van's a specialist in archaeology, not medicine. Oh, he's from Amsterdam University. You see, I was wondering what you were doing here in the middle of the jungle. You interested in archaeology, Latimer? No, I'm afraid not. Ancient civilizations are a little out of my line. I'm still trying to figure out the one I'm living in. Van's not interested in anything that didn't happen at least a thousand years ago. <laughs> what do you hope to dig up here, Doctor? Uh, evidence of a very early civilization. Pre-Mayan. Pre-Mayan? I didn't think there was any before the Mayan. What have you found? You won't get anything out of Van. He won't talk until he's ready to publish his findings. As a matter of fact, I made a very interesting find today. You did? Well, it belongs to your civilization, not mine. Well, yes, it certainly does. It belongs to me. Yes, one of the servants picked it up. I'm interested. Where's the rifle for it? <laughs> Search me. But didn't you have any fire? Only a 45. Why do you carry a rifle bullet if you haven't got a rifle? Because it has his name on it, hasn't it, Mike? That's right. A man of courage and intellect, and you believe in lucky charms? Mm, no, no, I don't go for all that guff about courage. All I ever had was a fixed idea that it wasn't my time yet. And why this lucky charm? Because one day I lost the idea. I got scared. When was that? D-Day, 1944. Oh, you were a soldier? Mm -mm. Correspondent. They dropped me into Normandy with the airborne troops six hours before the landings. I don't know what happened, but 
All of a sudden, I felt that I was going to get it, so I panicked and I ran. I didn't know where. I just wanted to find myself a hole in the ground. I did. Only there was a German in it. And his rifle was pointed right here. I even heard the bolt click. What happened then? Nothing. When the argument was over, I had his rifle and that bullet was in it. Either the gun jammed or he was more scared than I was. I don't know. But I do know that bullet's got my name on it. And I don't want anybody else to have it. You'd better give it back to him, Van. Well, certainly. Thank you, Doctor. You're a lifesaver. Those dogs I hear? Yes, those are our dogs. Sounds like quite a pack. We only let them out at night. Mm. Mm, I wouldn't want to be out there. They sound savage. They are. What are you keeping for? Well, you see, our Indians here had a habit of disappearing. They'd come back two, three weeks later, slowed up our work. Now they go to their huts at night and remain there. Well, that's, uh, that's quite an idea. That works. Van, you'll scare Miss Connors. Everything's perfectly all right. You know how you worry about it. Just don't wander about outside. That's Jan, Van's assistant. He's a Dutchman, too. Strong silent type. this was the place. Well, it couldn't have been here. Yes, it was. Look. There are the marks where we skidded. Yeah. I don't get it. We've just found your bags in one of the Indian huts. So I think you'd better check them over in case anything's missing. Well, I'm afraid what's really missing is the plane. The plane? Yes. I'm told what was left of it wouldn't fly, but it certainly wouldn't walk either, do you think? Well, of course not. You sure you looked in the right place? Yes, I looked in the right place. Oh, well, we'll find it for you. These Indians do funny things, you know. Yes, but you see, this isn't exactly funny. I kind of figured on patching up that plane to get out of here. We'll get you out of here, all right. Don't you worry about that. But you took a pretty hard knock yesterday. You need a bit of a rest before you go. You see, they'll be searching for us. No one knows where we are. Isn't there some way of sending a message? Sorry, I wish there were. Our only contact with the outside world is we'll be here on the radio. What are we going to do? Just make yourselves at home and leave everything to us. Parker, Emmy Kiwana. Emmy Kiwana. By the way, did you say you had a revolver? Yes, I did. Well, it's not here. I'd better go and inspect their huts again. What do you make of it? I'm not sure. There are a couple of strange ones. I looked through the books this morning. You know what? What? There's not one single book on archaeology. Hmm. What's it all about? I can only remember where I've met Mr. Brown. Maybe I could tell you. It's crazy, but every time he opens his mouth, it... Ah, it's ridiculous. What? Nothing, nothing. Do you help if we could find out where we are? Are you sure you won't try any of our local brandy, Miss Connors? Oh, no. No, thank you. Well, how about you, Latimer? No, it's still in business, thanks. Isn't it working? In just a second. We'll see what we can get you. Can I help you find a book? No, I have one. I've only read Nietzsche in translation. I see you read him in German. Yeah. Or is this yours, Doctor? It's a language of science. Every civilized European knows German. Well, that leaves me out. How about you, Brown? Van doesn't recognize the English as civilized Europeans. You don't speak to No, I'm afraid not. Mm. And it has been learned that Latimer took off from San Marcos in highly convivial spirits. It is characteristic of the novelist's colorful career that he should reappear, only to vanish again in even more dramatic circumstances. Search planes have been combing the wild and mountainous country, but at this late hour, there is small hope that they will be found alive. <laughs> Little do they know. Now, your position is unique. Why? Tomorrow, your obituary will be in every newspaper. Legally, you're dead. 
Not many of us can escape our past, but you can. I envy you. Well, what have you got to escape from? Here's another flash from Mexico City. The girl who was lost with Michael Latimer has been identified as Catherine Connors of the editorial staff of the widely read magazine, Sight. The magazine's editor, Henry McCartan, said in New York tonight that the last word he had for Miss Connors was that she had discovered Latimer and hoped to get the intimate personal facts which caused the novelist to cut off his writing career at the peak of his fame. Miss Connors, who joined the magazine a year ago, had attracted attention with her frank and searching, some said merciless, profiles of prominent personality. You're quite a girl, Katie. Mike, please try to understand. I do. Seems, as the Americans say, it, she's been taking our friend Latimer for a ride. Mike. Mike, you've got to listen to me. All right, then. It, it's true I deceived you. It's true I was sent down to find you. <laughs> What's even worse, it was my own idea. I happen to love your work, and I wanted to know why you quit. Mike, a man of your talent has no right to quit. You can skip the literary criticism. What else could I do? Just been honest, honey. And get my story? You, you'd have kicked me from here to Halifax. You got your story. Yes, it's terrific. You want to know something else? I'm not going to write it. <laughs> of course not. Mike, it happens to be the truth. What do you know about truth? Or honesty? Doing it the hard way without using your big brown eyes to get ahead. Well, don't give yourself too much credit. Any one of those four-eyed monsters from your nosy little magazine might have done just as well. I was ready. You do this for money or do you get a belt out of prying into people's lives? The new kind of journalism. Let's play Peeping Tom. I salute you. You did a fine job. You'll go far. Thank you.
Ja, die Hunde sind so unruhig. Wo ist Jan? Draußen. Wir brauchen lieber selber nach Söhnen. Ja. Did you check on Latimer? No. Well, don't you think we'd better? Commotion. The dogs must have stirred up a jungle cat. Thought you might be wondering what it was all about. Oh. Well, they sounded so close, I thought they were after me. Oh, no, we'd hate to have that happen, Latimer. It's all right. Go back to sleep. Good night. Good night. talk to you. You can't speak politely. Why speak at all? I don't want to talk to you, but I have to. I found out something last night. So did I. Now look, old girl, we'll have to drop the personal feud till we get out of here. Since our most pressing problem may be how to get out. Ooh, how mysterious you sound. I'm trying to tell you that these men aren't Hollanders, they're Germans. Oh, now, really? Mr. Brown, a German? No, no, not him, the others, but he lied. He speaks German as well as they do. I suppose if I spoke French, that would make me Mata Hari. Oh, shut up and listen. I'm telling you that the owners of this joint aren't leveling with us. Why don't you speak English, Mr. Latimer? You used to write it so well. Look, they've got a secret workshop here. Tools, guns, airplane parts, even the bent prop off my plane. And my automatic, which the Indians are supposed to have grabbed. Now, what does that add up to? You tell me. I don't know yet. But I do know that their lies, plus their being here in this forgotten ruin in the middle of nowhere, plus the hounds of the Baskervilles, adds up to a pretty weird setup we've dropped into. If you're trying to frighten me, you've succeeded. It's about time. Our only chance to get out of here is to work together, agreed? Well? I guess so. Okay. Right now, I want to take a walk. You come along to make it look casual. You needn't worry. I'll make it look casual. Where are we going? First thing's to find the plane. I suppose you know we're going in the wrong direction. Not if we're going to find it. We'll work our way clear around. They probably stashed it away where it can't be seen by search planes. Don't look back, idiot. They following? No. I'm not scared. Then smile, kid, smile. Buenos dias, senor. Taking our report card to teacher. Whatever teacher's hearing, he doesn't like it. I think I've got it. It's crazy, but it could be. 
Here he comes. Good, let him come. Hold him here and keep him talking. Do what? Keep him talking. How? You know how. Where's Latimer? Oh, uh, he's getting me a drink. Oh, but we keep the drinks in here. No, no, just, just a glass of water. Oh, I see. He'll be right back. Well, I understand you've discovered our little secret. I don't know. What secret? Our airplane. Oh, yes. Why didn't you tell us you had a plane? Yes, that was stupid of me. I can see that now. But I really wanted to keep it a pleasant surprise for you. But you told us we were completely cut off here. Oh, yes, but we are. Unfortunately, we've had engine trouble. We're still working on it. Yes, uh... We met your mechanic. Yeah, Anne? <laughs> yes, an excellent pilot, but I'm afraid he's not as bright as he might be. He seemed to think that you and Latimer were about to take off. <laughs> we thought we found our plane. Yes, of course. That's really why he won't leave the plane. It might disappear as yours did. I told you our Indians are strange people. They're very superstitious. I believe there's a legend that one day their tribe will be destroyed by an evil bird from the sky. And, well, that terrifies me. What is it? Doctor, don't, uh, don't do that. Very interesting, that story about the Indians. So that's what happened to my plane, huh? They thought it was a big, bad bird. What did they do with it, burn it or bury it? I really couldn't say that, man. It's the only explanation I can think of. Darn good story. You mind if I use it sometime? Certainly not, if you ever start writing again. Oh, don't you believe what Miss Connors tells you? I'm writing again. Could be the best thing I've ever done. If I could finish it. I thought you were getting Miss Connors a glass of water. Yes, yes, I was, but I got to thinking about that story and it went right out of my head, right out. Maybe you two could help me work it out. I'm not interested in novel writing, Latimer. Oh, but you will be in this. Especially you, Brown. The principal character is an Englishman. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I've yet to find an American author who could handle English character convincingly, but they all try. Well, then, we might as well listen to this. All right. Now, let's see. Uh, we'll say he was born 1908, good stock, old respected army family, father perhaps a general. Education, uh, traditional, uh, I'm not too good on this, but let's say Winchester and Cambridge University. You're doing very well. Oh, thank you. Brilliant boy, charming, handsome, but uh, not too well liked. Perhaps he's, uh, perhaps he's too ambitious. Yes, yes, that's the flaw in his character, ambition. Consequently, the army as a career is not for him, so what should he do? Diplomacy, that's his dish. He has plenty of pull, so he goes into the foreign office. Come the 1930s, he's doing all right. Remember the 1930s, Mr. Brown? Mass unemployment in England, corruption and rioting in France, civil war in Spain. A rat race, a world rotten with politics. He saw it all. And what he saw, he despised. Does this make sense to you so far, Mr. Brown? Perfect sense. A fascinating character. Oh, yes, yes, he's very smart. He sees where politics are heading. So, now what happens? Uh, the British Embassy in Berlin. Let's say, uh, 1937. No strikes, no unemployment, no rioting, and the trains run on time. Order and authority. He likes it. And something equally important, he falls in love. Very much in love. She's blonde, beautiful, aristocratic, a true daughter of the master race. And then, uh, <laughs> oh, I think I can do this part very well. Then the courtship. And what a courtship. Not just a boy and a girl getting together, but a union of two states, England and Germany, to run the world. But while boy and girl draw together, their two countries draw apart. Britannia jilts Adolf on the church steps. That's very awkward, very awkward indeed. Now, you've got to remember three things about our hero. He's ambitious, he's madly in love, and he's determined to be on the winning side. So at this point, he does something very reckless. He resigns from the British Embassy publicly. How much more of this do we have to listen to? Is that the end of your story, Latimer? Oh, no, no, no. Now, just bear with me for a minute. Suddenly, our hero is a big man. He's a patriot trying to keep Britain out of war with the Reich. 
He marries the girl, and when war does come, he stays in Berlin. And now the cards fall, just as he caught them. Poland destroyed, France, Belgium, Holland, Norway. The apples are falling. Only one remains to be picked. England. His hour has struck. There must still be horse sense in the British people, so he'll make a direct appeal. How? By radio. He pleads, he warns, he threatens. Every night his mellifluous voice is heard. And step by step, he's become that lowest of all men, the traitor. The word traitor has no meaning, Latimer. It's only given to those who lose. Your General Washington was called traitor by the British, but he won and is revered as a patriot. Your hero might have saved England. From victory? That's another word with no meaning. It's true, Germany was crushed, but what has England won? The high command had been left alone. Just a minute, Van. We haven't heard the end of Latimer's story. Or is that the end? No. No, there's got to be a last chapter. But, uh, it's not quite clear in my mind yet. Your hero dies, of course. No, no, he's a resourceful guy. When his dream world collapses, he gets out, saves his skin. Uh, let's see. Uh, how about this? He ties up with two other guys who also have good reason to get out through Spain, Portugal. Wouldn't be too difficult. It's rather a long walk, Lad. Oh, they grab a plane. One of them would be a pilot, Luftwaffe. So they disappear. And live happily ever after. What do you think? I think you've been very foolish telling us your story. No, I don't think so. It hasn't been published yet. I might not even write it. If I could make a deal. I can't see that you have anything to offer. Oh, but I do. There's a wife in Germany. Wouldn't he trade, say, Miss Connors? No! Quiet! Wouldn't he trade Miss Connors if I gave my word to get the wife out and helped her join him? Mike, I'm not going without you. Shut up, you. Kate. But you see, my wife was killed in a bombing raid. They were British planes. You must forgive Van's anger. My wife happened to be his sister. That's that. Yes. I don't see how we can let you leave now, do you? But you can't just keep us here forever. No, we can't, can we? Fly her out, Brown. She'll keep her mouth shut. Do you think they're idiots? I'm telling you, you can trust her. Are you sure? Look, it's very simple. If she breaks her word, she knows what'll happen to me. If you think I'm going to let you save my hey. What do you say? Is that a bargain? No. It's very quixotic of you, Latimer. We'll have to think it over. Anyway, you still have to persuade Miss Connors. From now on, you stay indoors. Both of you. Oh, I really fixed it, didn't I? Should I kept my big mouth shut? How did you know who he was? It was hearing him without seeing him. I knew that voice meant something to me. I'd heard it so many times during the war. I just can't think anymore. It's like a nightmare. What do we do now? The question is, what do they do now? The thing has to be done, it should be done. And you are so sure that by now he'd been forgotten. He's recognized you, not me. You fool. Did you see the look he gave you? Do you imagine he believes you're stuck out here just because I married your sister? You didn't have to tell him that. No, but I did. He's got quite a memory, Mr. Latimer. He'll get on to you. Just give him time. But we have lost too much time as it is. What else have we to lose? Our lives. You don't call this existence in a vacuum living, do you? I've had ten years of this thinking jungle, too, you know. Another ten years ahead of us by the look of things. I don't care how long it is. Well, I do. Ten years in this blasted ruin with a handful of Indians and the intellectual companionship of a professional soldier. It's a high price to pay for one's life. I'm not sure it's worth it. Well, listen to me, Brown. I'm not throwing these years away. I've stuck it out for one purpose only. One day I'm going home, back to Germany. You've got Germany to go back to. And understand this. Nothing, no one is going to stand in my way. I don't care what it is or who it is. Do I make myself quite clear? Yes. 
I think I get your general meaning. Good. I shall be sorry, though. I've enjoyed having them around. It's been a pleasant change. Now we better get it over with. Well, there's no need to panic. But she should manage to get away. Where to? How? He won't leave the girl. How far can he get with her? I tell you, you'll give it a try. In that case, all we have to do is be prepared.
He's gone. said that before. As long as he's alive, we're in danger. I'd rather be in our shoes than his. He doesn't know where he is. He's made the mistake of taking the girl. They'll leave a trail a child could follow. <coughs> York, summer, Aki! Noon. Yeah. We're leaving a trail a mile wide. We're not going very fast. Yeah. Eat this. It'll make you feel better. I hope you know where we're going. The sun rises in the east. That's where the coast is. Yeah, but how far? We'll find out when we get there. I mean, how long? You... Hunt's on. On your feet. Wild pigs. They can be mean. Stand still. They're going in the right direction. Hope that old Tusker's as mean as he looks. He was meaner than he looked. Our luck's running good. Oh, I've got to rest a minute. We can't. 
We gotta keep going till dark. Every minute counts. Come on. We should have kept going and surprised them. More likely they'd surprise us. They'd hear us coming a mile off. We don't want to tangle with Latimer till we get him into our rifle sights, and we can't do that in the dark. Now get some rest. You'll be likely to need it. Having an open fire is crazy. We've got to eat. How's a fish? Just don't remind me and I'll enjoy it. <laughs> What's so funny? I was just thinking. The boys must have choked on their brandy when they found out who you were. The one who really choked was you. I still think having an open fire is crazy. You got a lot to learn about this stuff. Those guys feel pretty sure of themselves. They won't take a chance of falling into a trap. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. That's, uh, that's not a bad idea. Listen, what do you think? <laughs> Take it easy, take it easy, it's all right. Come on, get up. We've got to get moving. Somebody in a hurry, I hope. Where do we go from here? We got our feet wet. Come on. Get up. We 
haven't got a minute. Come on. Tracks are still wet. Come on. only chance. That's right. Keep on fighting me. I didn't want to fight you, but I got you into this. Please leave me and go. Now listen. Whatever happens, happens to both of us. I want you to make it. Think you can go on? All right. Let's go. But they're ahead of us. Uh, we're ahead of them. We're going back to the plane. And we're going to get a good head start.
I... All right. You're doing fine. Yeah. This is where you came in. It won't be so tough now. All we have to do is follow that trail we cut. Just keep it up. Ready to go? All right, let's get out of here. Come on, genius was so sure of himself he's left that plane unguarded if we can get back there first there's nothing to stop us what are we waiting for mike go to sleep katie mike i want to tell you something just in case we don't make it. We'll make it. I mean, just in case, Mike. The trouble with you is you haven't learned the power of positive thinking. I know, but Mike... Go to sleep, Katie. Okay. You needn't be so positive. she very beautiful? Who? Your wife. I don't know, Katie. I forget.
Latimer! It's no use, Latimer. You've come to the end of your run. Now open this door and come out. Now listen to me, Latimer. There's no escape. But we are quite willing to let both of you go if you give us your word to forget everything you've seen down here. Are you listening, Latimer? I'm listening. All right, then. Now open the door. Are you there, Latimer? I'm here. Miss Connors? Miss Connors? She's disgusted with both of you, Brown. She doesn't like boys who lose their tempers. You have to break the door down. We'll go and get some minions. We'll lock the dogs up or they won't come out. All right, stay here. Yo, Samba, Aki. What's happening? They've, they've gone for help. We haven't a chance, have we? Yes, our luck's run out, Katie. I'm sorry. I don't care. I really don't, as, as long as it happens to both of us. You picked the wrong guy, Katie. No, no. I picked the right guy. You know it, and I know it. Latimer. Latimer. A bullet out here appears to have your name on it. You sure you've spelled it right? I'd hate to see the girl get hurt. She will, you know, when the door gets broken down. Women and children first? That doesn't sound like you, Brown. Now, this is important, Latimer. I'm trying to give you a chance. In a few minutes, Van will be back and this door will be smashed in. He's quite mad, you know. You'll both be shot down where you stand. I won't be able to stop him. But supposing, Latimer, that you and I did a deal, I give you your lives, you fly me to somewhere in South America. How about it? What about your buddy? What do we do about him? I have a rifle here. He won't know anything about it. But you better make up your minds quickly. He won't be away much longer. You know, for a minute there, you almost made sense, Brown. But how could we trust a guy ready to shoot down his friend? I'm telling you, it's your last chance. It's no deal. All right. 
right. Whatever happens now is on your own head. We've got to get him close to the door. How? I'll show you how. I'm getting out of here. Don't be a fool! Stay where you are! 